So you're making an awesome fantasy character, but you just need some classy, easy, flexible belts. Not a problem. Now I've been designing 3D characters for many years, and I've probably tried thousands of different belt brushes and curves and add-ons out there, and every time I find one that kind of works pretty well, it's always missing something that requires me to spend hours manually fixing later. Maybe the topology sucks, or it's not creased properly so the shape falls apart when you subdivide it, or it's not UV mapped at all so the texturing is a nightmare, or sometimes the package just doesn't have the design I really need, or maybe it does have the design, but there's no double-sided feature on it. So this year I decided enough was enough, so I made all my own from scratch, exactly the way I need it to be done. So I present to you these 16 types of belt curve brushes that I now use for all of my fantasy characters, the simple empty belt buckle, the classic fantasy adventurer's belt buckle, and the classic thin belt strap for small things like gauntlets and armor harnesses. I've also included a belt ring for when you need a belt design that has multiple belts coming together and intersecting, and I've included flat versions as well as versions that have holes for the classic belt designs. And I've also included a steel chain curve for when you're designing dangerous things like Exodia. Chains are often left out of most belt brush packages, but they're extremely common in fantasy design, so I've included two chain variants. The first is the standard straight cuffs, and the second is the more edgy spiked cuffs. I've also went ahead and added the most common classic belt buckle shapes that I usually use for my own designs, including the classic rectangle, the edgy rectangle, Captain Falcon's belt buckle, buckle and Star Fox's belt buckle. I've also thrown in the basic low poly belt buckle that I use for most of my game ready characters which are designed to be a little bit more exciting than the basic rectangle but still simple enough to be low poly. As usual there are two types of licenses. I've made sure that the personal license includes everything you would need to buckle up your epic fantasy character which includes all these single sided belt curves and brushes, the unspiked chain cuffs, and the classic rectangle buckle. The commercial license includes everything that the personal license has but also includes the double-sided belt curves, both the unspiked and spiked chain cuffs, and all five different basic belt buckle shapes. Every single one of these belts has had their topology optimized and cleaned for low poly game design, but very carefully placed creases in order to make sure that they can maintain their shape if you want to subdivide them for higher res projects. I have also spent days making sure that they are all properly UV'd, with their maps separated cleanly into UV islands, making them super easy to drag and drop into Substance Painter for amazing textures and of course are fully functioning and ready to go in both blender and zbrush now when it comes to using curve tools like this blenders not really designed to do this naturally so I'm gonna explain how to do this in zbrush first and then for those of you who are in blender I will show you how to translate all of these functions into blender so let's start out with zbrush since it's way easier if you're using zbrush basically if you want to use my belts click on them and you're basically done from here you just drag the curves wherever you want you can change the size and paths as usual. I recommend toggling on lazy mouse for smoother paths. And if you want to wrap the belt around an object, just turn lazy mouse off, left click, hold shift, and let go when you're happy. You can also press spacebar during this process to slide them up and down. If you want to use my belt buckles in ZBrush, just click on them, and you'll be able to drag and drop them wherever you want. Now, if you are trying to use belt curves in Blender, here is how you set them up. Open my Blender file, then pick whatever design you want to apply to your character. Then click on it and remove all of the modifiers. Grab the middle, bottom, and top segments of the buckle. Then press Alt-G and Alt-R to reset its position and rotation to the defaults. Don't worry if it looks kind of weird, do not try and adjust these objects in edit mode. Otherwise, you might throw off the array modifier later on. What's important is that you grab the middle, bottom and top segments of the buckle. Copy them and paste them to whatever project file you want. From here, press S to scale them up or down to make sure they are the right size for your character. Once you have determined that the size is correct, press Alt G and Alt R to again return them to their default position and rotation at the middle of the world. From here, select the top, bottom and middle objects and press Ctrl A to apply all new transformations. Then press Shift A, Curve, Bezier, select the middle of the belt, go to Modifiers, and add an Array Modifier. And under Fit Type, say Fit to Curve. You can select the Bezier Curve, set X and Y Factor to 0, and set Z Factor to 1, and turn Merge on. Then back under Modifiers, add a Curve Modifier, select your Bezier Curve like before, and from here, under the Deform Axis, one of these is going to fit your curve. I recommend you just try them all out until this happens. In my case, Z turned out to be the right one. 
So now under the caps, select the start of your curve, select the end of your curve, and you might see this empty space right here. To fix that, click distance and hold shift to slightly increase it until the gap is filled. And just for good measure, I'd reduce this to something like 0.96. Now technically from here, you're done. You can select the Bezier curve, tab to edit mode, and use these points to adjust the position of the ends, beginnings, and rotation of the belts. And the belt will automatically adjust to fit your design. The shape of the curve is controlled with these points. You can change the position and rotation by adjusting these, and if you want to add a new point, pick two points, right click, subdivide, and that will give you a new point to control the curve. You can remove a point by right clicking and hitting delete point, and you can change the size of a point area by hitting alt s. If you want to twist the curve, you can do that with control t, and you can just click the midsection of the belt and change the x, y, and z scale directly if you want to make it a little more or a little less chunky. Now, if you feel like the curve isn't smooth enough and you would like it to be, increase the resolution until you're happy, and just place the belt wherever you want from here. Now, if you do all of this and you find that there is still a major gap between the beginnings and ends of the curve, what that means is click the mesh that is causing the gap, tab to edit mode, and move it up or down until the gap is gone. So, yeah, like I said, this blender's not really built for this, so it's like a lot of extra work to achieve the same thing as what we have in ZBrush, but this this is how you control belt curves in Blender. If you want a more complete tutorial on how to control curves and arrays in Blender, I have an entire video dedicated to that which is totally public and freely available. And if you're a ZBrush user and you want to know more about curve brushes, again I have a totally public and free tutorial series explaining everything right here. So hope that helps and as always hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you around.